following the cutting back. Find out what you could do better, what people saw as your strengths, what they saw as your weaknesses, and work on those as you try to present yourself to a new job. It's being without a job is just terrible. And it's just terrible. I mean, I, my dad worked for uh, U.S. Steel for 37 years. He started, he was 20, and he closed the plant where he worked when he was 57. And he kicked his butt. I mean, he totally kicked his butt. I never saw somebody more sort of not knowing what to do. But I mean, it, it's tough, and it shakes your confidence. And I think that's where you have to go back to say, okay, what is it that I'm meant to do in this world? And, and let me take responsibility for learning how to do things. And again, I think that sometimes people, they don't know how to do it. I was, we were talking before about, somebody says to me, well, you know, I spent eight hours a day on the computer, and I sent out like 50 resumes a day, you know, be a monster. And I say, well, you know, I'm sorry, you should have went to the beach that week. Uh, and there's, you know, there's skills that you need to learn, and a lot of it does come back to this whole relationships thing. You build relationships. You get to know people. You get to do things for people. You get them, they know you, they trust you. People call me up all the time and they say, but we're looking for somebody for this kind of job. Who do you know? Well, who do I talk to? Who do I uh, refer them to? The person I spoke with last week or the person I haven't talked to for six years? So relationships are things that you need to keep building. So it's kind of like that old piggy bank thing. You know, Stephen Covey, you know, he unfortunately died uh, several months ago. But he used to talk about the emotional bank account. Well, you want to have a strong emotional bank account with a lot of people so that if you get into that situation, and yeah, your confidence is going to be shaken, you have to believe in yourself strong enough, and you have to be able to call on that network of people. Networking isn't just coming to places like this and handing out business cards. Networking is keeping in touch with the people that you know, having a true network of people that you sometimes help, that sometimes can help you. It's always staying up with people. When I first got into business, yeah, I started my business in 1988, um, we didn't have the internet then. If I found myself with a slack two hours, I picked up the telephone and I just went through my phone book and I called friends. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? And you know what happened? It'd be surprising how I hadn't spoken, I'd spoken to somebody for six weeks, six months, and two weeks after I called them just to say hello, they said, hey, we got a project. You might be good for this. Why don't you come and do it? And it's kind of like, had I not made that phone call? I, I doubt if I would have gotten that phone call. So networking is nurturing the group of people that you have all the time, not just going to events and handing out business cards. Now, let me tell you another thing about network. I think that the most important thing that you can do when you meet somebody is say to yourself, what can I do to help this person? Most people go to a networking event, it's like, oh, hey, hey, Vincent, uh, maybe you could, yeah, maybe we can talk and you can hire me to do a project in your company. <laughs> that's, not way, that's not the way to think about it. I meet Vincent, what can I do to help Vincent? And if you do that, it's karmic. It's karmic. You start to help people with no expectation of return. You remember the movie Pay It Forward? You start to help people with no expectation of return, they're going to help you. Best example I can ever give of that is uh, 50, 50th Street and 8th Avenue in New York City. I'm going into the subway. And there is like the most raggedy homeless guy I've ever seen. And usually, I try to make my charitable donations organizations. But this guy, he just looked so bad, I gave him a buck. So I start walking down the steps into the thing, all of a sudden I hear, pss, pss. I turn around and he's standing there, and he'd been standing in front of the gate, and somehow the gate was unlocked, he held it open. So I beat the New York Transit Authority out of like two bucks, and I gave him <laughs> I gave him a buck <laughs> and, and I always think about that though, I mean, you know, uh, it really, it was kind of like, it was an immediate karmic kind of reaction. <laughs> but trust me, if you do things for people without expecting things in return, when you need something, the chances of you getting something back are higher. And it's not always going to be one-to-one. -one. It's not always going to come from the same people. But if, if you do that, you build those relationships, you nurture them, and you're helpful to people, you're going to be you have a much better chance of succeeding, particularly when you're in that tough situation uh, where you're looking for a job. So let me kind of run through these as quickly as I can. Um, and I, ooh, come back over here. In a stroke of amazing serendipity, before I ever even knew about your organization, I wrote a book called Climbing the Purple. <laughs> 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 Something is very funny. And um, uh, the 
organization was going to buy, buy for everybody, and I kind of screwed it up, and I didn't get an order from the publisher. So um, what we'll be doing, Clara uh, will be taking business cards. So if you want a free copy of the book, I'll have them shipped directly to you from the publisher. We took addresses. We wrote everybody back. Or sign up. Or, or, however, you know, just make sure that I get your information. And, you know, if you help me out and ask questions or engage with me a little bit, you might even get a signed copy. <laughs> a lot of blah blah, you know, a little shameless bribery. Uh, but anyway, finding purpose and direction, you have to figure out what it means to you. You know, it's really funny. I, I studied journalism. I was going to be the next Edward R. Murrow, broadcast journalism. I even did a, an internship at a TV station in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And I became a VISTA volunteer when I graduated from college, which is sort of like being in the domestic peace corps. And that changed my life. I figured out that what I really wanted to do was be in the training and development field as a result of that experience. And I have my entire life worked in training and development in some ways. Some way of helping people learn and grow. We're doing organizational work. And so when I talk about you have to define what it means to you personally, you really have to decide what's right. I remember uh, uh, Clara was telling me Sylvia Montero was here uh, last year to do this talk. Well, Sylvia and I used to work together. She's a friend of mine. That's how I actually got referred to your organization. See what I mean about um, uh, friendships and relationships? But Sylvia decided she was going to find a company and she was going to work with all the way up the ladder. And she did. She ended up as the chief HR officer for Pfizer. Her son who's maybe had a little easier in his life than Sylvia did growing 